He also concluded that the objects which were furthest away were travelling fastest. That's not unreasonable. If an object travels to here, in the same time as an object travels to here, then this object must be travelling faster than this object, because it's gone further. So the further something is away, the faster it must be travelling. Consider a piece of elastic that is four centimetres long. We're going to give it coordinate points one, two, three and four, and we're going to pin it and anchor it at that point. Now let's stretch the elastic so that it's twice as long as it was before. The coordinate points have now been stretched. One, two, three and four. Let's imagine that they were one centimetre apart here and they're now two centimetres apart here. If this whole process took one second, what can we say about each of the coordinate points? Well, point number one travelled one centimetre from there to there. One centimetre in one second. So its speed or velocity was one centimetre per second. Point number two travelled from here to here, a distance of two centimetres in one second. So its speed was two centimetres per second. Point three travelled from here to here, that's a distance of three centimetres in one second. And point four travelled from here to here, that's a distance of four centimetres in one second. And so you can see that the further away the point is, the faster it's travelling. We can also see something else about that. And that is that the distance now divided by the velocity is a constant. The distance of point four is now eight centimetres away from the fixed point. And its velocity was four centimetres per second. And so the distance divided by velocity is two. Similarly, point three is now six centimetres away from the fixed point, And it travelled at three centimetres per second. So distance divided by velocity is two. Point two is four centimetres away from the fixed point, And it travelled at two centimetres per second. Four divided by two is two. And finally, point one is two centimetres away from the fixed point. It travelled at one centimetre per second. D over V is two. More generally, if we take a coordinate frame where we regard that as the fixed point and we simply label coordinate points one, two, three, four, and so on. And we say that the distance between neighbouring points is A, but that A can vary with time because as this expands, A will get bigger. The distance between any two points will get bigger. Then we can say that the distance between any particular points we choose, let's say the distance between one and four, that distance will be the change in the x-coordinate, 4 minus 1, times the distance between each coordinate, times a. We can differentiate that with respect to time. dd, with respect to time, is delta x times dA over dt. We can write dA by dt as a dot. It's a convention. dA by dt is a dot. But dd by dt, the rate of change of distance with time, is of course just the velocity. And that equals delta x times a dot. We can multiply by a over a because that is simply multiplying by 1. But now delta x times a is d. So now we can say that v equals a dot over a times d. And a dot over a is Hubble's constant h. So v equals h d. And that's the famous Hubble's equation. Hubble could now take this equation 
And knowing the velocity, which of course he could calculate from the red shift, he could work out how far the galaxy was away from the Earth. What are the units of Planck's constant? Well, the unit of velocity is meters per second in SI units. And the unit of distance is, of course, meters. And that means that h must be measured in per second, or second to the minus one, or one over second, depending on how you want to put it. But in fact, Hubble's constant is, these days, expressed in a rather peculiar way. It is currently thought to be of the order of 75 kilometers per second per megaparsec. A megaparsec is an astronomical unit. It is approximately 3.26 light years. The 75 is the latest estimate. It's actually very difficult to calculate Hubble's constant. When Hubble first did it, he got a value that was 8 to 10 times higher. If we express Hubble's constant in terms of per second, then Hubble's constant is actually approximately 3 times 10 to the minus 18 per second. 